greetings. Good evening. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. We can humble ourselves for our prayer to begin. <clears throat> Holy Father who art in heaven, the giver of life, the sustainer, the provider, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe, for giving us this privilege and opportunity to come and learn on what you want us to do for you in this end time. And so give us strength, give us wisdom, and give us power. Bubble, give us determination to execute all that you have instructed us to do. We pray this, trusting and believing through the mighty name of the dear Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity, for giving us uh, a wonderful moment to come before him. You may share with those who have not found. Um, the Lord is so wonderful to us. He's given us time to learn in his ways that they may know the way of life, the way of righteousness. That is the way of salvation, that thy saving health may be known in all the world. And we know that the first angel's message, uh, the first angel's message is given with a loud voice saying, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him who created the heavens and the earth. Well, we need to give glory in by demonstrating the life of Jesus Christ. And we've been learning here, Christ method alone will bring what? True success. That is the success I want. I don't know whether that is the success you're looking for. And we are supposed to carry it uh, to carry it on according to the pattern of Jesus Christ, the divine model. Well, um, in the past uh, two classes, we've been trying to dig deep to understand really what is our calling and what is God wanting us to do. And we are building, we are building on the rock, we are developing a foundation so that we can be able to be buildings that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And for that to be achieved, we have to be co-laborers with God and his son, Jesus Christ. And we have to be indicted by his mind, his spirit, enabled and helped by his holy angels to go minister to other souls that many can come to Christ. And so you need to thank God and take it serious because in heaven it is written today that there is an opportunity you've been given. And we know that if it is not utilized well, there will be a record against you that you have not um, utilize the time that God has given you efficiently. And uh, we are going to discuss just brief and glimpse of what health is and what disease is. Because as those who are going to labor in the hygienic restaurant institutions in our homes and in the society, in whichever field that God is going to send you God is equipping you with the knowledge on the line of health that you may help people who are suffering under physical, mental, and spiritual disorders. And so we are going to understand disease, causes, prevention, and cure. D 
disease causes prevention and and cure we are told that as religious aggression subverts what the liberty of conscience now god's people while they have opportunity they are supposed to learn about disease its cause prevention and cure for their own for our own sake and those who carry out the work in such line shall find labor anywhere so we are in a class we are in the college the highest education ever given to mortals where we are going to be qualified to labor anywhere anywhere in this world because the world is a lazar house of what of sick people sick people well uh what is disease that is a question that we can ask ourselves what is disease it is in ministry of healing 127 is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health it is the effort of nature the body that god created nature anything that god created but are the mechanism the body system we are wonderfully and um uh we are the book of psalms uh, 139 verses that teen say we are fearfully and wonderfully made our frame is made and formed by our father who is our shepherd and he knows that which is good for us and so when anything is inflicted in the body that is not according to what is in genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 before sin and even instructions given after sin what is the result it is the disease it is disease is symbolized in spiritual realms or aspects uh, spiritual realms as sin and what is sin it is the transgression of the law of god and it begins from the thoughts and when enacted sin leads to death and so god has given us his word in psalms 107 verses 20 say that he sent his word and healed them and saved them from destruction and many people are suffering is it hosea chapter uh, 4 verse 6 that my people are dying because of what lack of knowledge many people outside there are dying dying spiritually dying mentally socially because they have not known how to live many would have lived if they knew the principles of life that god has given in nature these principles when followed amicably the way the word of god says that brings health and life and peace it makes us to be in harmony with jesus christ in isaiah chapter 24 the bible says that i will destroy the world because they have not followed my commandments the word of god as it is in the scripture if not followed it has to lead to disease you remember jesus uh when god is directing the children of israel what did he say in exodus chapter 15 verses 26 if thou shall diligently hearken unto my statute and laws then shall i not put the diseases that i put upon the what the egyptians for i am the lord that who does what who healeth all your diseases in psalms 104 verses uh, 103 verses 
3 says that I'm the one who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your what? Diseases. And verses 4, it saves us from destruction. And so we are called in a special way to teach the world the true nature, the true cause of disease. And the God had given it uh, what really disease means in the word of God, that it is living in a way that is not according to the pattern of God, not according to the word of God. If you, leave, if you read Psalms chapter 38, David is crying, saying, asking God, uh, lamenting to God that the whole body is sick. Why is my soul sick and my joints, my veins are, are rotten? It is because of the iniquity that I have done. And Jesus Christ, after saving that person, that young man who was blind, he told him that go and sin no more. What should we tell people who are sick, who are under the weight of the consequence of sin, of malfunctioning of the body, when they come to us and we direct them to the word of God, we need to discharge them. What is the discharging word that we need to tell them? Go and sin no more. When sick people go to the word, after they have been healed, they need a what? A discharge sheet. Have you ever seen that? The discharge sheet that we are supposed to give to those who are sick, whom we have, uh, God has enabled us through the virtues that he gave us to heal is go and sin no more. That is the inscription that you and me is supposed to do now. What are the causes of disease? How do I know, according to the word of God, uh, how do I know and even evaluate what has caused the disease? Because we are not going to work as ordinary people outside there. We must be a people who are intellectual. You know, the people who are the, the students or the youth that were coming to the school of prophets, they had three characteristics. Do you know those distinct three characteristics? Number one, they were pious. That is Patriarchs and Prophets 2594. They were pious and they were studious and they were intelligent. What God is preparing you and me here to have is number one, piety. We must be people who are reverential, those who are studying the word of God reverentially to ask the Lord, where is your way? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but Lord, we want to know your way. Where can I find it? And then the Bible says, thy way, O Lord, is in the world. Sanctuary. God points us to the sanctuary. He points us to his word. He points us to his scriptures. Well, so in midst of healing 127, paragraph one, what is the cause of disease? And how does it manifest? It says, in case of sickness, the cause should be a certain, the, the root cause. What is the base? What really has caused uh, or has brought the onset of the disease? When the sick person comes to you, you want to know really what has caused the malfunctioning of the body. And you know that in the Bible, there is only one disease in the world. And that we find in Leviticus chapter 17 and verses 11. That is where all the diseases or all the manifestation of illnesses and sicknesses and, and, and disabilities and debilities comes from. It is impure what? Blood impure blood because life of flesh is where in in the blood so as an intelligent medical missionary uh, what you need to do if people come to you and they have those prognosis or those um, laboratory tests you have to be intelligent in knowing and reading 
those reports and know what really is the blood count. What is the uh, what is the CBC? This is the count of the blood cells in the in the body. What is the white cell count? What is the red blood count? Because we are training us here to know how even to read the reports. And by just looking at a sick person who comes to you, you should be able to evaluate and know what really that person, that that person is not in a good condition. So the cause must be ascertained. Now, in is it Job chapter 28, 26, 28, 26, look for that verse that says that the cause I searched for. So when people, when those who are poor used to come to job, he did not just used to give them money or give them sheep or goats or any wealth or just clothes like that. He searched for the cause. He asked this gentleman, why are you poor? Is it because you are lazy or because you need something to begin? And in a, a, an enterprise to help you live, helping people so that they don't come back to you. That is Christ's method. Do you know? Have you ever read the Bible? Anyone who was healed and come back to Jesus again that he is healed or that he is, uh, is, is sick? All that were healed, they went never coming back. But why do you think that the, the world is system or where we live, uh, the world we live? People love those who will uh, go try this. If it fails, come to me. Go try this if it fails. Now, our system or the way in which we are ministering should be different. Go and sin no more. That is our, our discharging allergies or our badge of sign that we need to give unto the people because we are giving the divine prescription that which is written in the word of God. And you need to take this seriously. You are not going outside there as a herbalist or going outside there as maybe operating as an ordinary doctor. You are operating as a Bible doctor, as a Bible health educator. That is what I told us. That is our prescription. That is our name, our title. I'm not a doctor. I am just educating people on the divine prescription. Well, in case of the disease, the cause should be asserted. Unhelpful conditions should be changed. Wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in high effort to expel impurities and to establish right condition in the system. Now, anyone who does not follow this, um, this divine prescription will fail. He will not have given a restorative mechanism to help. We are called to be restorers of the breach of the commandments of natural laws or uh, natural and moral laws that men may come back to the divine laws or prescription of health. And so that is your call. And following this method, you are bound to succeed. Amen? We are bound to succeed. Are we together? We are bound to succeed. To succeed. Now, how do you ascertain that course in Ministry of Healing 234, paragraph 1? This line of work, medical missionary work, gospel medical missionary work, be it even a Christian cook or guiding missionary or anyone who has a knowledge on health uh, must ask for wisdom. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verses 5, that if anyone lacks wisdom, what should he do or she do? Ask for God who will give to him sparingly. No, send liberally, without measure. He will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit without measure. And then uh, in Minister of Healing 234 paragraph one says, disease never comes without a cause. Disease never comes without a what? In Proverbs 26 verses two, 
says as a bad fly. And so a curse, causeless, can never occur. There are three causes of disease that I know. Number one, it is because of violation of the laws of nature. Violation of the laws of what? Nature. Transgression of the laws of nature. Number two, we can be sick as a result of um, just to for glory, to bring glory unto God. Do you know that? Why was Job sick? Why was Job sick? So that the glory of the Lord may be manifested. So you will meet people out there, or a righteous man like you and me. It is so, so wonderful to be called a righteous man, a perfect man in the eyes of God, can be sick just to vindicate the character of Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yeah. Well, so the way is prepared and disease invited by disregard of the laws of health. So teach people outside there that these diseases, we cause them or we are the people who bring them to ourselves. That is your duty. And then in Ministry of Healing 241, paragraph two, disease is sometimes produced and is often greatly aggravated. It is palliated or increased. Disease, sometimes we cause it. It says that uh, there is um, a say that says that uh, that heredity, heredity does what? Cause the what? The gun. But what triggers, triggers it? Our lifestyle Trigger, triggers it. It means you may inherit some disease, some condition from your parents, um, but for it to continue, you have to decide. It's your choice to live healthily according to the pattern of God or to destroy your body by the manner in which you live. So uh, we need to teach people this, that you have inherited, yes, you have that nature, but then you have to choose to live what? Healthily. Some health... Uh, of a health uh, advocate made a statement that uh, if you think that um, living a healthy life is expensive and time consuming, then try illness or sickness. How costly is sickness? Very costly, very costly. So we need to teach people that this method of healing or what causes disease is our ignorance and also inability to follow the plan of God and willing to do everything that God has told us to do. I want to now go deeper a little bit. Unhelpful condition should be changed. Unhelpful condition should be changed. We live in a world that people are ignorant of the unhelpful conditions that they, uh, that they have or that they do. The lifestyle practices that they do or practice that makes them to be sick. People are busy making money that they will utilize in curing themselves and at long last buying for them uh, a coffin or a casket to uh, to bury them. Do you know that? Because of that ignorance, God is raising you and me to do the work of agitating, agitating, educating, educating, and educating people on the right principle. Now, eating between meals is one of the unhelpful conditions that you need to teach people outside there that they need not to five hours between meals. Are we together? Yes, and the body should be able to digest the food well. And we are going to go deeper into how now to prevent and cure, looking deep into 
this pause. Eating between meals is very dangerous. Drinking with meals, very dangerous. And many people are suffering because they drink between meals. Many people are having acid, uh, acid reflux. Do you know acid reflux? Or ulcers? Or GAD? Gasoesophageal reflux. Uh, wherein, when after eating, they feel some acid coming out from a coming uh, or, or, or burning sensation in the, in the cardiac sphincter. It is because of the fermentation going on in the body. Another thing is that the body, um, or maybe gastric juices are not in the optimal a pH to correct well. So you need to advise someone with any uh, in any uh, alimentary canal or gut problem that you need to have specific time of eating. Don't eat between meals. Don't drink with your meals. If you are to drink, when are you supposed to drink water? An hour before meal, two hours after what? after the meals, so that you allow the environment, your gut to digest the food well. Improper and unbalanced diet, we need to have a fully balanced diet in order to live a healthy life. And do you know the elements of food that we have outside there? Carbohydrates, what else? Vitamins, what else? Proteins, what else? Minerals, what else? Fats or lipids, what else? Water. We need to have this in the body. You know, the DNA of the body is made up of three major components. The amino acids from the proteins. And we have the, uh, the lipoprotein, the outer membrane of your DNA is made of fats. And so fats is so important in our health, in our diet. Without it, your system will not work optimally. We need to not, uh, some people tell people, to, to, to tell to or teach outside there that oils are bad. Well, they are bad, the manner or the, the type which you use, but we need to eat good, cold press or natural processed foods, nuts are very important in grains in providing this nutrient. Well, um, another thing is uh, make sure that your food is fully balanced and that is why we need to be uh, gardeners to produce our food. Vegetables, fruits, nuts and cereals. We need to teach people out there how to grow these foods. That is your work. That is my work as a medical missionary. He is not a medical missionary who is buying most of the food stuff. And, and nowadays, I want just to be frank with us that we find it difficult to treat cancers and other uh, malignant diseases because the food that we eat uh, that we buy for them, however good they may be, broccoli or cauliflower, they have toxins because they have been sprayed and they have grown in a, in a soil that is not nutrient dense. And so when we eat it, we lack some nutrients. That is why God is calling us to be good guardians. Read Isaiah chapter 28 from verses 22 to verses 28. Seven, our God is calling a people who are going to dedicate themselves to growing nutrient dense foods. We need to have a proper mechanism of growing our foods. Hot and cold foods, they, uh, they affect our gut system and our, our biotic system. The good bacteria and the bad bacteria as a, because of the fermentation and maybe denaturing or inactivating the good uh, the enzymes and the juices 
And so our system is always weak and weak. Humanity is growing weaker and weaker because of the way people eat today. Poor sanitation and hygienic condition, eating late surplus, overworking, eating inorganic and processed spices. Now I want to, uh, I want to comment on eating late surplus. Now, if you uh, thrive in that kind of lifestyle, eating at nine, some people eat at 11, all throughout their lives, you are building a disease. It is, you are developing uh, those excess calories will be, this, uh, will be stored in your system. And then you have obesity or you develop uh, high cholesterol or low density lipoprotein. That is the cholesterol that puts or plunges themselves on the arterial walls so that they become hard and you develop diabetes, you develop um, cholesterol, you develop obesity, and then you may develop cancer. So God is calling us to understand the root cause of disease and how the system needs to be cleansed and, and, and worked out. Um, Overeating, eating in haste, and holy life not devoted to God. Now, I will spend time in talking about this course. Then I will move in crescendo or very fast as we progress because most of the things we shall have known. Um, now, this is some line of diagnosis or cause that many people will not look at. Now, depending on the person you are going to meet, in the hygienic restaurant or any institution, or when people, I understand that you are able to help them in health, they will come to you, both young, married, unmarried, old, and, and uh, those who are young, and holy life and not devoted to God. If you meet a young youth, what do you tell him? Do you just tell him, oh, you have ulcers, take this and this and that? No, you have to bring him into the understanding of living a holy life. Galatians chapter five from verse 16 speaks about a holy life. Verses 19 to 21 speaks about uh, the uncleanliness or filthiness. Colossians chapter three from verses 12 to verses 22 speaks about living a holy life. Many youths are sick because of living a life that is not pure. Adultery, fornication, and evil, uh, evil thoughts, pornography, uh, being uh, into many bad companies and companies, a bad company does what? Corrupt good what? Good morals. These are principles that as a medical missionary, when someone is yearning to have health, a healthy life, you have to dig deep into that. Now, family irresponsibility. This is a cause of disease that many have not known. You know, many people, a woman, someone who is married comes to you, you have to go deep into family issues. Never begin treating a family man or woman uh, who, uh, before you go down into family matters, is this man responsible? In First Peter chapter three, um, First Peter or Second Peter chapter three, you may check it later on, uh, verse seven. I think Second Peter three seven speaks that says that men they need to treat women as a what? As a weaker vessel, so that their prayers may not be. You may be a, someone who is uh, proliferant or proficient in prayer and works miracle. But if a man who butters her wife and beaters his children <clears throat> comes to you and you pray and there is no healing, you just have to come down and bring the family together and ask them, how are you people living? Because you will be praying but there's still some bitterness in the heart of the wife, in the heart of the children, 
there is no forgiving spirit. And this has broken down many, many people. Be someone, when, when someone comes to you for a counseling about his health, don't fear because this person has known that you are very confidential. Are we together? And one of the aspects of a character of, a, of any minister of God is confidentiality. And that is why this person is coming for help. He's ignorant. He doesn't know that, oh, being irresponsible, not bringing food home to my children, not clothing them, not taking care of them, uh, the way I talk to them, injures them. And that sometimes when I become sick, it becomes difficult for me to be healed. A wife the same way and a child the same way. We have to understand this root cause of disease. Now we have bitterness and unforgiving spirit and then wildness and covetousness. Many people today are weighed down with obesity or increased or weight gain because of overthinking, because of many groups that they have been joined or many temporal activities or many loans that people have today or thinking about how life will be and so they develop pressure, they develop ulcers, they develop cancers. Do you know that one of the, uh, one of the not major causes of breast cancers or hormonal imbalance is uh, uh, stress or being overweight and burdened with the things of this world? Now, I want to tell you that God had already seen these causes. If you read Timothy, you read Timothy chapter, second Timothy, sorry, first Timothy chapter six, uh, uh, first Timothy chapter six verses, uh, let me just get you the verse now, chapter six verses, um, where it speaks about uh, the wealth, wealthy people versus uh, look at verses 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And um, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. There is a part that says that um, they, uh, they, will, uh, they will have a life full of sorrows. Life full of sorrows. I'm checking there, not seeing it. Well, when God blesses us, we are called to distribute. In fact, one of the remedies of healing many diseases is being, doing charity work, thinking about others, living for others, not for you, for yourself. If you meet a rich person, go take him through First Timothy chapter six, verses, uh, from verses 12 to 18. He must understand his responsibility. And some people will gain help just as a result of changing the way they think, the way they treat others, the way they relate with others. So we are called to be a social people, a people who desire to know the needs and the goods of others. Are we together? That is the primary call that God has given me. Now, the next thing that you are going to look for in the uh, cause of disease is to make sure that uh, wrong habits are corrected. Wrong habits are corrected. These are pre uh, preventional mechanism. One of the most important uh, preventional mechanism is obedient to the laws of health. Another one is being doing charity work. These are prevent, uh, preventional mechanism. Number three, one of the most preventional mechanism is following 
the right uh, ways of living as opposed to what I've described up there as an unhelpful condition. So you need to be broad and wide in your thinking in the way you approach the cause of disease. Don't just limit it to what you can, <clears throat> you can see or what you can know. Go deep to the spiritual causes of disease. Are we together? Yeah, because that will really make you to bring a complete restoration to the people. Even if this person dies or passes on, what will happen? You have not lost the case because this person is going to heaven, is waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes, you must know the nature of the disease. This is one of the aspects of now cure of the disease that we need to know. How do you cure the disease? Know the nature of the, the disease. You must know the nature of the disease. Now to <laughs> medical missionaries, you will find it rough outside there. Because people are sick, many have gone to hospitals. Many have gone to have flown outside their countries but there is no, there is no change. Why uh, in, in Jeremiah, is it Jeremiah 18, 22? In vain shall you seek for many medicine, but you shall not be cured. Why? Because you have left the way of health. You've forgotten the laws of health. What are the laws of health that we know? Number one, proper nutrition. Nutrition, number two, regular exercise. And which are the best exercises that we need to do? Gardening, walking, exercises that makes, that, uh, makes our body to, the whole system to be exercised. The muscles, the nerves, to ensure proper circulation of blood. Well, you need not to sleep on me. Um, let me continue. In Minister of Healing 235, it says, when the abyss of health is carried so far that sickness results, the sufferer can often do for himself what no one else can do for him. You can do something for yourself that no any other person can do what? Can do for you. The first thing to be done is to ascertain the true character of the sickness and then go to work intelligently to remove the cause. You work what? Intelligently. Now this part of intelligence is what makes us to fail or to lose case after case. Because we don't apply intelligence. We don't understand the character of the disease. We have not really understood the root cause of the disease. And so it weighs us. What is the possible causes of disease? There are lifestyle causes, and there are also opportunistic diseases that take opportunity of your immune system. Why do you think that most people are sick today? I can trace with accuracy that most of the diseases, 80 or 70 to 80% of the diseases are caused as a result of going away from the divine plan of Genesis chapter one and chapter two. Is it true? God says in Genesis chapter three verses 18, that verse 17, that out of the ground shall thou eat your food all the days of your and in Genesis chapter 1, verses 20, 22, 29, sorry, says, You shall eat fruits bearing seed, have bearing seed, and so fruit, grains, and nuts. And then we find what is right for us. But God, as in man, sorry, has invented, invented many, many ways because of improper, uh, improper gardening skills. That is why many diseases have resulted. And then man has invented processed foods, and that is what most people um, survive on. 
some of the causes of diseases are parasites. You need to ascertain, are you handling malaria? Are you handling typhoid? Are you handling brucellosis? Are you handling cholera? The way you handle them is different from the way you handle some lifestyle diseases. You must know the true nature of the what? Of that disease. You must know how the disease, um, uh, or you can say uh, the onset, how, this, how does this disease begin? How does malaria begin? What, uh, what is the palliating causes? What aggravates it? For example, if you're treating a parasitic diseases, you know that the parasite feed more on sugar and a body that is not oxygenated. And so what do you want to do? You want to deprive them of sugar and feed the body with more alkalized food. You must know the palliating causes or palliating means those that aggravate it. And then you must know the quality. Really, how does it manifest itself? How does it aggravate itself? If you know that malaria cells affect the T suppressor cells, what do you do? I want to look for foods that are going to increase the count of the T suppressor cells and then make the T helper cells to work very well and to strengthen that immunity. You must understand the true nature of that disease. Are we together? That is what is going to help you to eliminate that disease. And you must understand, uh, you must understand where the, the, the disease radiates from. Where does it come from? What organ does it affect? Which system does it affect? And how do I go about the system? And disease is not a localized thing. Disease is a systemic. When you are treating a somebody, do not treat that somebody. If he's feeling pain here, you want to do what? And you say, if your hand, uh, if your hand dishonors you, what do you do? You cut it out. Well, it is true. If it is your hand that is causing you to sin, you need to cut yourself from transacting anything that is going to make you sick. But the, the system of the world today, if your hand is having cancer, what do you do? You chop it off. Not understanding that it is something that is affecting the whole system. How many systems do we have in total in the body? 11 systems. 11 system and we need to understand how these systems operate and function from the uh, from your nervous system to your integumentary your skin system integumentary system so that you are able to intellectually remove the disease are we together and you must also know um, try to understand if you want to know the true cause or true nature of the disease, involve the patient. Try to understand really what do you think causes this disease? What do you think? Don't begin from your own perspective, I think. Okay, if he fails to give you an answer, then from the diagnosis you've given, you can give a word. You can understand really now this is what causes the disease. Now, there are three main causes of disease, genetics. What? Do you know what genetics is? Devrin, do you know what genetics is? What makes you to be tall or short or having a, a, a light skin or what makes your eyes to be blue or black? That is genetic makeup. That is a deep science. Now, some people have inherited bad genes because of unhelpful way in which our parents did what? Eat. And so in Ministry of Healing, page 234, paragraph one says that many suffer in consequence of the transgression 
of their parents. Now, what do you need to do? You need to live healthily. You need to live according to the pattern of God. Minister of Healing 234, paragraph 3 say, God has endowed us with a certain amount of vital force. He has also formed us with organs suited, uh, suited to maintain the various function of life. Now, in curing the disease, you must understand the foods that each organ needs because we were made from the dust, isn't it? We were made from the dust. What does the dust contain? Number one, the dust or the soil contains what? Minerals. Are we together? Now, the true approach to disease or curing disease is re uh, not replenishing, but filling the minerals. How do we fill those minerals? Eating the food that God gave in the beginning. Psalms 104 verses 14 says that I have given them harvest for what? For the service of of man and to heal them. So you must understand the composition of the soil. That is where now uh, gardening work comes in. We want to, you want to give something or some food that is nutrient dense, having all the minerals. How many minerals do we have in total that you know? Just guess for me. Let's say about 92 minerals. 92 essential minerals. These essential minerals, if they are not in the body, the body will suffer from disease. And all of them work together synergistically. They work together. We have minerals called macro, to mean that they are majorly needed in the system. And they are those that are needed in smaller quantity. How do we make sure that the food we take has all of them, we must uh, do our farming according to the pattern that God gave unto, unto us. Are we together? Yes, that is the approach that we need to give to this disease. We have to remineralize or give the body that which it needs. It needs vitamins, minerals, and it needs a lot of glucose for it to run and give you power to live. Now work intelligently to remove the cause. And then I want us to read Minister of Healing 157, paragraph two. Now, this is now the, uh, the ideal approach. Pure what? Air. You must have pure air. Why do you think pure air? Go back to Genesis chapter two, verse seven. What happened? After man had given, let's say, minerals, I'm speaking now in a scientific term, he had made man out of the dust. The soil contains minerals. Minerals in themselves cannot make the body to be healthy. There need to be a, a what? A breath of life, and that is oxygen. With the oxygen, the cells are going to be energized, activated, and they are able to remove all the toxins. They are able to work optimally. And then um, we, we, we find sunlight. God puts Adam where? In the Garden of Eden. And in the fourth day, he had created the sun, the heavenly bodies. And sunlight helps the body to uh, to synthesize vitamin D. And vitamin D is synthesized in the body in the form of uh, vitamin D3, citrol. And vitamin D help the mineral called calcium to get into the bones and, all, uh, and calcium carries all the 91 minerals to your cells. And so the body is what? is healthy. You cannot, don't teach that, oh, we are sick. You have a bone problem because you are lacking calcium. The person may be having calcium, but it's, the bone contain all the 92 minerals. Are we together? The bones contain what? 
or the body and the cells contain all the 92 minerals that works together. They need to gather together to ask for God's blessing. What do you think that they will ask? What will the minerals and the vitamins and the glucose ask for from God? The blessing of health. Are we together? Yeah, the cells gather together. They ask him, they are asking for God's blessing. What blessing? Blessing of health and strength. Rest, proper rest. Many people are working, overworking today, exercise and regular exercise. This one, if you are doing a basic assessment, uh, uh, assessment, lifestyle assessment, do you understand what it means? A lifestyle assessment? You are assessing someone. You are trying to examine someone. Do you follow? Do you eat properly? Do you be in the sun? Do you do this? Do you eat? properly during water. This is going to give you the true cure of disease. Are we together, Steve? Yes. The use of water. What do you think water does to the system? Anyone? Water is used for doing what? For washing. And when you are going to remove the waste, when you are going to remove the waste, one of the most important things that is going to help you is water. And it is which type of water? Pure soft water. We are advised not to drink chlorinated water or salty water. Why? Because they bring the mineral imbalance. And later on, you may develop a heart problem. This is a difficulty every place, but we need to find techniques of making soft and pure water. We need to trust in divine power and we need to be in a good environment. Uh, that is why country living is very important or living in a place where there is nature, where there is fresh air and uh, interacting with the soil. And then you need to know how to remove the waste. The elimination channels need to be open. What are the elimination channels? Your skin, you need to sweat, do exercise, drink a lot of water to turn your body down and to remove waste. Colon, your colon is also a very important elimination channel. It removes those waste are what accumulate in the body and then they lead to cell death. When cell dies, someone will experience pain. When cell dies, someone will develop a wound, a putrefying wound or a fermenting wound. When, when, when the cell dies, someone may have a problem with locomotion or movement. So you need to clean your colon. You need to make sure that you live healthily. Your lungs, you need to breathe fresh air. Your kidneys, you need to drink a lot of water. Your lymphatic system needs to operate well. Now, I want to end there for now and give us a break so that we can be able to, uh, to continue next time. Brother Steve, what do you have? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have not talked about toxicity and yeah, I shall talk about that when we meet in the next time. Deficiency of minerals. Well, that is why I was talking about, uh, about uh, feeding the system uh, with the right food and minerals and using the right gardening techniques. Yeah, so um, I believe we shall continue in depthly on the next class to understand uh, these two concepts of disease. Can we pray? Our most gracious Father, what in heaven, we thank you because you are teaching us 
to live healthy and according to the divine pattern. We are praying that all of us who are gathered here may have this knowledge and practice it in their lives or in our lives and then go out there to teach others on the principles of health. May you help us and those who are listening and who will be listening, dear God, we pray that they may be agencies that you use to reach out to others. Let your blessings be upon us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.